Okay. So today we are going to do promoting clients' well being, pain management, and sleep. Uh, just to ask you one more thing Did you guys get a chance to uh, do your workbook? Was there anything that you were not able to do or you felt difficulty with? Or we do need to throw some light on it? Okay. Let's see. Till I will. Them on like chapter four, or like, like the ones I don't know, I just skipped it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like chapter five, 17. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, mom? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Why are you late today? You're always the first cover today, yeah? yeah. I just forgot. It's okay. It's okay. So that means everybody was able to to do their workbook, right? Yeah, I just did uh, four chapters. Four chapters. Try to finish and then look if there's anything you feel a difficulty with. Uh, then we will go over it. Because uh, on weekends, I did my that uh, standard first grade with CPR. Mm -hmm. So you did it? Finished? Yeah. Good. How about you two? Did you guys get a chance to do your CPR? Or what? CPR. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. But how how much do did that? you pay for it? 200 something first time? Uh, 149. 149. First time is 149. Then second time, every time it will be, I think, $65. Yeah. You all have to do it either before or after. It's just that you should be able to take yourself. It shows how to do if you are struck in a trauma, in a heart attack, what's your job, how you do compressions and how you put those links on. Yeah, the AED. This one. A, yes, AED. That's airway, breathing and circulation. How to check if he's breathing, if he has circulation that we always do, capillary refill, and then put the person on the sideline so that you will not choke on it. Anyways, we'll talk about that later. I would put down, share the screen. Yeah. So uh, today's, uh, uh, today's chapter is promoting clients' well-being, pain management, and sleep. Again, each and every person we deal with, whether our client, whether our resident, whether our patient, we do remember introducing ourselves. We do remember their privacy, confidentiality. We have to keep in mind, not only that, the next thing is providing them help, promoting their well-being. Promoting their well-being. When we say promoting their well-being, we do... Uh, say we have to help them with their independence the more our job is to promote their independence if a person is 80 89 90 75 promoting independence is not that he would start walking again i'm just trying you to give you a gist we talk over and over about it Promoting independence does not mean that this guy, guy who is a bed bound would start walking. A person who is uh, not able to move will start moving. Promoting independence is whatever is left with them. 
we try to keep it and we try that they should use that skill. If a person can help us reposition ourselves in a bed, we would ask, we would request, can you please turn on this side? If a person is able to use a urinal, he can move his arms, he can use his legs, we can give him a urinal and ask him to use a urinal. If a person is able to brush, move his arms, you can give him the brush and ask him, can you help yourself brushing? We can give a person a warm towel and we can tell him, uh, meanwhile, I'm going to give you a sponge bath. Can you wipe your face? This is all promoting independence, promoting well-being in it. So that they don't look like a couch potato. We do take care of our kids. Our clients can be young. Our clients can be old. Mostly, we deal with older adults. All of our clients are most at uh, the average, we deal with uh, elderly clients. If we don't promote in our own kids, pick up your clothes, do this, fold your clothes, pick up your bag, they will not learn. Same thing, if we do not promote it, they do not remember, they don't learn. These people, they are dementiated when you tell them, and remember not to tell them two or three things together. We always stay say one thing at one time, step-by-step step instructions. They are dementiated, they are old. They cannot take two or three commands at one time. They need some time to process it in their brain. If you tell them, you need to, uh, we need to stand up. You will stand in the bed, I will pull your pants up. Once they put their feet down, give them two minutes to process it in their brain that I have to keep standing. The reason, their capability, their mind status, and their well-being is not same as B. They cannot do multitasking. They need things. And at the same time, because they are old, they do have a lot of health issues. They can be in pain. They're elderly, they had pain, something went wrong, somebody was yelling or things, they couldn't sleep, it will affect their well-being. Think about yourself if you don't sleep through the night. Would you be able to process things faster? No. Same, they are older adults, they cannot process things very fast. Every time you tell them a command, Mr. Smith, you need to stand up now. We are going to stand up at the count of one, two, and three. Then you tell them, give them a time. You need to hold on to your walker. Put your hand here. Once they put, put your another hand. Give them that time to process because they cannot process it at the same time, same level as we can. But please and please, what they can do, do not do that. I know this is good, but that's not healthy because we need to promote this kind of independence on, in there. Promoting clients' well-being. Providing good care requires a holistic approach. Support workers play a key role in promoting the well-being of clients by understanding their psychosocial needs and knowing the ways to help them feel safe, comfortable, and relaxed. Psychosocial health is well-being in the social, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual dimensions. If uh, that's true, you play a very important role. You go and ask him, hey, good morning, how are you, how was your sleep? Did you sleep well? If you feel they are feeling low, what happened today? Every morning you are so, because they are very happy, they are always cherished. Uh, if they are not feeling well, she's in a low mood. Can all Because weather also plays a very important role in it. If they miss their loved ones or it's something happened this date and they remember it, 
try to console them. Again, when you are trying to console, look, if you are a male, she's a female, try to only pat, do not touch. If he's a male and you are a female, try to only pat. Think about that thing. What are sometimes some people are completely white. They do not like touching. If, we, if it's an Asian, they feel relaxed. If you touch them, they feel consoled. So keep that thing, that those cultural things in mind. Think about how appropriately I can touch. If I, touch, if I talk to this lady, you can hold her hand because she's frail. She feels weak. She gets a soothing touch. Yes, you can. Sometimes there are clients and you tell them, you, they do always tell you, hey, you are my sunshine. And when they are in a good mood, they always say, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine, my days. Are... When they are feeling low, you sing that for them. So you know how psychologically, how you can give them comfort, how you can make them feel you are a person to me. Most and most of the times they tell you, you are my sunshine. When they are feeling low, you sing that for them. You go and hold their hand. Hey, what's wrong? Are you feeling good? Is there anything I can get you? Let me get you some warm water to drink. We'll go in the dining room. We'll sit up in the dining room. Then I will help you with something. So we just give them a time. We understand that they're emotionally weak. Why not today you sit with us at the nursing station so that then there's somebody always around her as she's feeling low. Comfort is the feeling of contentment. The client has no physical or emotional pain. The client is calm and at peace. Comfort is affected by age, illness and activity. Temperature, ventilation, noise, order, and lighting. If there's too much light or very less light, it will affect. If they're not able to breathe, they are short of breath. I can't breathe. If you, feel, if you see <clears throat> your clients, they're short of breath. The first and foremost thing you do is sit them up. They're lying. Put them up straight because when you go back, it's difficult to breathe. You make them sit up. If you don't know where the oxygen tubing is, things happen. We don't always land up things uh, into things when you are in the room. You can be in the washroom and she got short of breath. Now what? You don't have a tubing. She was not on tubing. Ask to sit up. If he's on a commode, sit up straight. Lean forward towards the front. Take a deep breath in. Okay. They will now relax and they will feel better. That's how we, if they are short of breath, we need to ventilate them. Always sit up, lean forward to the front. That gives, that opens up the lung space more. That gives it a chance to breathe more. Then you can ask them to mouth breathe. Take a deep breath. Because maybe with nose, they cannot breathe. And most of them, elderly, they are mouth breathers. You will see, even when they are sleeping, they have oxygen on in their nose, but they are breathing from the mouth. If, if, if it's noisy, it, it will not give comfort. Some people like to put on the light music, mild music in the morning. It, when you are changing someone or someone is in the room, we have free order gongs. Make sure every room has one. When you're changing, the order does not smell good. That changes the smell of that room even if somebody had a beer. Enough lightning is always required to move in. Another thing that I would request you guys to do is, unless the client says, keep the lights off, 
if the client is in the semi uh, private or in a private room that means that two people will share one washroom and if it's a private one person will share one bathroom make sure you put the light of the washroom on and close the door halfway through so that there's a mild light that will keep on entering the room if she wants to if she needs to get up from the bed or if he wants to get up or needs to get up from the bed it's not completely dark so that they can fall if they if they are independent kind of a person okay temperature and ventilation most healthy people are comfortable when the room temperature is 20 to 23 degrees in fans, older persons and people who are ill may need higher temperatures for comfort. Some people who are kids, like in fans, older people and some people are cold. So they need, because they are sick, because they are ill, they need higher temperature. So what you do is... You you bring you what you do is you get a warm blanket from the warmer, get it, put it first in, then put the other blankets. So that the warmth you don't put it on top of others because then the warmth will not, it doesn't stay longer. So the warm uh, blanket should first go in, then put other blankets on so that the heat will remain there the warmth will remain there and they can stay warm to protect infants older persons and people who are ill from drafts make sure they wear the proper clothing yes offer lap robes to those in chair and wheelchairs provide enough blankets for warm and also make sure that the warm the warm blankets or even any blanket it's not uh, completely on the ground because sometimes when you move the wheelchair it can the wheel can get wrapped and they can fall over so make sure you tuck those blankets properly around their leg in the wheelchair cover them with a warm bath blanket when giving care always make sure when they are naked when they are naked when you're giving them a wash grab a blanket put it on the upper portion while you are doing the lower one then put it on the lower uh, body area while you are doing the upper area one this is privacy second cold move them away from drafty areas from that cold and always make sure when you enter the room you check the temperature of the room we always your job is you will get a kind of a roaster sheet on that roaster sheet it's always written the temperature of the room and you have to double check. I'm going in the room, there's a temperature scale. Look at that, what is needed to be here and is here. Sometimes it can go way too up or it can go way too down. If it's too cold or too warm, both are not good for them. When it's too high, it can cause dehydration. They can pass out with dehydration. Many odors occur in healthcare agencies, bowel movements that I said, urine, draining wounds, vomitus, creating embarrass embarrassing odors. So when, if it's um, somebody had a BM, somebody urinated, somebody's wounds, not all wounds are clean wounds. Some wounds are very um, dirty wounds. They have a smell, a strong smell. When they vomit, vomitus. So always use the odor gone in the room before you start doing something so that you don't feel and your client doesn't feel uncomfortable. Odors from body, breath, perfume and smoking may offend others. Um, uh, all the working facilities, they're mostly for, uh, fragrance free. You cannot use uh, perfumes. You, you can't use those. But other body, breath and smoking can offend. I don't like smoke. Somebody who's a smoker got in after uh, smoking, they do have that leftover smell in their clothes and hands. 
smooth orders present uh, special problems. Clients, residents, and staff must also follow agency policy. If you smoke, practice hand washing. After handling smoking materials and before giving care. So whosoever is a smoker should wash their hands before and after. If you smoke, give careful attention to your uniform, hair, and breath. If you are a smoker, you need to, uh, you need to smoke outside. Take a time, five minutes, ten minutes after you get in, washing your hands so that it doesn't smell. M maybe the client you get in does not like the odor. Good care, ventilation, and housekeeping practices help prevent odors. If um, that's true, if you're providing good care, if you give the client a wash in the AM, your uh, co-worker will give a wash in the evening. That's called PM care. Why We don't uh, go and give them shower every time. We just grab a towel, wipe them, change their clothes, morning clothes, evening clothes. That's when we give them good care. When they are ventilating, if the room has proper, some some rooms have a window. You can put the window open in the morning a little bit, not the whole whole window. Make sure you do not open the whole window just a little bit so that there's enough ventilation. Sometimes somebody can jump through or can fall through. Things can go, so we always use a little a hand this much uh, area to open up, and if there are the reason with housekeeping is there are some cups, uh, some food trays or leftover food. You can always take that out. Ask the housekeeping to uh, mop the area. Noise. Clients who are ill and many older others are sensitive to noise and sounds. Clients want to know the cause and meaning of new sounds. Unknown noise may cause fear. Yes, that's true. Even if you yourself are sleeping and sometimes there's some banging, don't we get put up what the banging is? Don't we think we also are curious of knowing what the bang is, what the yelling is. If now we have a client and suddenly there's one client who is yelling, others get disturbed, others want to know what it is. They can sleep, they get curious. At the same time, they are dimensionated they get that fear that could be we are not also safe. There's something going on with this person. Next would be us. So those are some of the things that happens when it comes to noise. To decrease noise, control your voice. I have already told you, sometimes if it's a loud tone, a loud tone from our side can be a noise. Handle equipment carefully. Some equipments, um, like a concentrator, uh, what else? The compression stockings, when you uh, deal with those things, they make a lot of noise. So make sure that when we handle these equipments, we make sure we try them outside first. Keep equipments in good working order. Answer phones, signal lights, and intercoms promptly. If you, when you work, you will get your own phones, which you can communicate between your co-workers. You, you don't yell, you are anywhere. Just press the number and uh, maybe it's one for the uh, your co-worker, two for the nurse. You ask them, hey, I need help here. So they come and help you there. Uh, call bells, that is signal lights. Intercoms, you always ha have a phone on the, in the nursing station. The client will press the call bell in room two. You get that intercom. You can always press the intercom button and talk to them. Yes, my dear, what do you want? I'm coming. So that's how we can help. That's what talking about the night and if you leave the call bell on the ting 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 it keeps on beeping that is one of the biggest noise we have in healthcare whether it's a facility 
whether is is it you when you go home trust me honestly after you go after you go home if you do not answer the call bell on time you will be in the washroom showering or washing your hands you will still hear that beeping ting ting because you left it open for such a long time so that is one of the biggest noise we have the way it hurts us it hurts more than more and more to our clients they want to get what's that sound don't make that sound some people bang the dining table it's a no noise lightning good lightning is needed for safety and comfort adjust lighting to meet the client's changing needs whether they want if as i mentioned there's someone you need to have the lights on we can put the we can just keep the washroom light on close the door halfway through so that the light can come in always keep light controls within the client's reach and then uh, they have the over the bed they have a light and there's a plastic cord that we have a long cord we attach it to the client's bed uh, pillow so that if they have to pull they can pull it to on, on it and to off for that's how we control the lights we give them the long cord and then we attach it mostly to their pillow this protects the client's right to personal choice again that's promoting client's well-being some clients may request night lights or want tv left on all the night yes some people are scared they want somebody to be uh, talking to them or they want lights but not too much they'll tell you can you put the night light on or can you put my tv on uh, put the volume off there's a mild light that keeps on and that feeling of safety minor illness can cause fear and anxiety if a client gets sick and is suddenly like you are okay now you have a flu or there's uh, some pain in any joint these people they are dementiated they get worried they get a fear they get anxious what will happen now why am i having this what happened to me they'll ask you so many questions but i don't have it yes you don't but today it happened why who's going to help me how is it going to get treated what will happen next because they not only have a fear of being sick but they have a fear of who will take care of them how things will be done who will pay for them clients must feel protected oh i'm here with you don't worry they have a loose be a several and they get worried why i have i don't i i never get an accident in my pants it's okay we'll pre we'll put a brief on for today i know you're not feeling well you do have diarrhea we can put the brief on once you are done you can if ever you have an accident we can change we can uh, put a new brief on giving reassurance but remember always i always tell you whenever you reassure whenever you tell your client something make sure you do it if you help your client and you are telling them i will come back do not give a time unless you can come back in that time otherwise tell them i'll be back in a while i'll make sure i help this person in i don't know how much time it will take and i'll be back with you because if you reassure someone i'll be there in 5 minutes and you're not they lose trust on you and this thing happened twice they know she will not come when you work you will see if um there are some clients they will tell you oh i know she will not come because they have tested like it's not they tested you it has been incidences or instances when the person said i'll come in 2 minutes or 5 minutes or 6 minutes 10 minutes time and they never show
They show up at the end of the shift. They show up in the afternoon. Clients may be fearful of procedure, equipment, or pain or discomfort. I told you, they might, they always have that fear. What am I going to go for? Am I going for test? What kind of test? How will it be done? What will the effect of the test would be? But I don't have anybody with me. How will I be able to survive? They have a lot and lot of. If ever you don't know the answer, make sure you tell them. Let me call your nurse who will explain this procedure to you. And you can tell your nurse, can you please speak to your uh, client? Can you speak to your resident or can you speak to your patient? Because he's very worried, he's very anxious. Otherwise, he would start climbing out of the bed. Let's reassure, tell her what or tell him whatever procedure they are going to do. Go for or whatever this equipment we are using it for, how we will use it, what we will use it. I was not on oxygen. You suddenly are putting me on oxygen. Will I not be worried? Yes. I have a right to be worried. I will ask you, why am I on these this oxygen, how long I will I be on it? What, what if I have to go to the washroom? These are common questions you ask, they will ask you. It's okay, don't worry, we are with you. This is just because you were short of breath. You're not gonna be there for uh, ever on this. We will, if you, have, if you want to go to the washroom, press this call bell, I will put take it off, we'll put it on. Uh, the other one or we will remove it they have a new IV on and they will tell you now what if I have to get out of the bed to pee uh, uh, how do I take it up no worries don't worry we can stop it when you need to go to the washroom press the call bell I'll come I'll help you not all the time they go for surgery the equipment changes that they have is either they are put on an IV, either they are on oxygen, either they have a pain for pain. We put their uh, no, uh, compressions, uh, st dead stockings, dressings. If they have any problem with the fractures, they might have some uh, weights on. So those are the equipments that they're dealing with. And pain, again, I told you, they're old, they have joint pains. They're old, they're sick, they have pain. They are lying in the bed for more than eight hours. They feel back pain. When you go in your client's room, you see she has difficulty turning. Do not waste your time. No. Tell her, okay, let me ask your nurse to give you something. I will come back and then change you. Till the medication will have an effect. Go to the nurse. Tell her it's very difficult to reposition her. She's in pain. She can't turn properly. She's not able to... Uh, we are not able to give her care. She's not compliant with care. It's difficult for us to provide care. Can you give her something for pain so that I can come back in 15 minutes? Uh, uh, any pain medication does not take more than 15 minutes. So until you finish with your other client, the effect of the medication is there. It will reduce the level of pain. They can help you turn over things become easy. If I have pain, I don't want you to touch me. Or I will take lots and lots of time for my turnovers. I might not even be able to concentrate on what you are trying to tell me. Sit up, put your arm through. But I have arm pain. How will I put it through my uh, sweater or jacket? Think about those things. But if you give them medication, not all the time it can show 100% relief, but at least there will be a level of relief where they can be compliant with the care that you're providing. 
they would not yell at you they will not it will not make your job difficult okay you are trying to ask them to come out of the bed because they need to go to the commode if they have pain back pain will they no and the other thing is even if they will do it it is a safety concern they can fall why you will do you you will break your back why you will give discomfort to your client why not to go and ask your nurse to give her or give him something to relieve them from pain from this discomfort mostly either you will be doing it in the morning or you will be doing this thing in the uh, evening and both times are those when you have morning stiffness or people have evening pains is the best time if you are uh, if it's evening give them a sleeping uh, pain not sleeping pain but pain medication they can sleep through the night if it's morning give, it's morning stiffness give them some tylenol not all the time you will give them hydromorphone give them some tylenol that will help at least it relieves the excessive pain it's tolerable if they have osteoarthritis if they had rheumatoid arthritis it can uh, help 100% but still it makes a big difference clients must understand the procedure wh why it is being done as i mentioned to you why who will do it for me how will it be done and what feeling sensation should be what do I, they won't tell you what do i expect what will happen next if i am going for this how will it help who will do it for me then who will bring me back who's going to pay for it will it be like this forever will i not be able to do this your client let me give you a good example your client is incontinent has bed sores has a very bad wound this wound is always coming from p because he or she cannot keep an eye he doesn't remember he's incontinent he's dementiated he's confused and this confusion comes because if you see some of the patients who are in pain are not due to pain uh, being the reason would be uh, bone and joint pains no they are elderly they forget to pee because they are elderly they 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 are over 75 they lose muscle strength voluntarily or ill ill in voluntarily they forget and they don't have the same urge to pee so they don't know i need to pee even their muscles don't work properly they cannot pee there's a time when they drink 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 but they're not peeing much they retain when they retain they start to get confused they have pain but they don't know. they have bladder they tell groin pain to so some of the people i have seen mostly they ignore it when you don't know were you the person who changed the brief the brief is dry they are telling you feel like my client is confused he is dry he hasn't peed but he did drank some water maybe he or she is retaining ask your nurse this is a bladder scanner can you scan her or can you scan him whosoever it is him or her maybe he is retaining that's why he is feeling pain urinary retention is the biggest pain in elderly they forget to pee because they are dementiated they don't have the same muscle strength voluntarily and in 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 voluntarily they cannot pee they retain your client now needs a foley every time you cannot do an in and out after two in and outs if you do it twice the third should be keep the foley in 
That's regular order from a hospitalist. This is a new procedure for the client. What will happen when I have a Foley? Not all of them get a regular Foley. Some people, it does not, they have issues, they have uh, bladder issues, they have prostate issues, they have other issues. They get a suprapubic from the upper through and through skin. Some people, their They have cancers in their genitals, whether female or male. They need suprapubic catheter. So those things they would ask you, what, who will do it? For, how will it? If, what if you explain each and everything? Not only that, if they are on that thing, you have to show them, wipe them and help them. Okay, I'll do it like this. Now you do it. If they are going home, they are in the hospital, you have to encourage them to touch it and do it themselves. Because we don't know when they go home who will be doing it for you. But if it's a residential home, you will have to do it all the time. For them. Pain. Pain or discomfort means to ache, hurt or to be sore. Lying in bed is soreness. Not able to pee is soreness. If they are constipated, they will have to me eat. Look, I have told you several and several times, your job, the biggest job that you do is inform your nurse when was the last bowel moment and when was the last time he peed. Because that piece of information can save a person from dying. If they don't know when the person, when, what was the last time they had uh, had a BM, they have constipation. They are on pain medication. They need to give them, we call them senocytes. They need to get senocytes, the pills, to poop. Some people have, if you work in a residential homes, some people have so bad um, uh, constipation that these senocytes, laxatives, uh, and all these peg lights, they don't work. You hang them and then you put pad and stuff so that hanging puts pressure on their bum and it relieves them. Because their muscles do not work the same way. They cannot contract there, they cannot relax there. And that makes it difficult for them to uh, poo and pee. Comfort and discomfort are subjective. You must rely on what the person says. Pain is personal. Every person has different level of pain. What the pain I can feel, maybe you don't feel it the same. way. If I feel this is strong pain for me, it can be a mild pain for me. Remember, we have two things. One we say subjective and one we say objective. Objectives are when you take vitals, you take a blood pressure, you take a temperature, or you take a pulse, you check their SpO2. We have numbers. Anything that has numbers are considered to be objectives. But subjective is something that your client tells you. You cannot measure it. You told me, hey, I'm in pain. How bad is your pain? What kind of pain is it? Where is the pain? When did it start? I would say on the count, if zero being nothing and 10 being the worst, where would you say your pain is? If they don't understand zero and 10, we have some smiley faces. Like we have smiley to ground, uh, grimacing. We always show them can you see how bad it is and they will put their finger that tells you how how bad the pain is if they are non verbal they cannot speak you would see they will contract themselves their hands are fists they make fists that means they are pain. these are signs of pain 
grimacing, making their body tight, fists closed. These are all signs of pain. You uh, try to clean your client. You try to help them, move them, reposition. They close their eyes. They will move their face up and down. Facial movements. Those are, again, signs of pain. From there, you can feel how bad the pain is. Grimacing is also a subjective thing. If a person complains of pain or discomfort, the pain the person has pain or discomfort. Body language, that's called body language that I was trying to tell you. Body language can often re reveal if a client is feeling discomfort or pain. If the client is unable to verbalize. If your client is non-verbal, he cannot verbalize. You see it from the body language. I again will tell you, grimacing, folding legs, body contracted uh, in a contraction manner, fist closed, those are facial expressions. Those are all the how they verbalize pain. The total person is affected by comfort, rest, and sleep problems. If your person is a total care, again, total care means who cannot reposition, who cannot he eat or needs a feed by himself, cannot do washing, cannot help with washing and stuff. That's called a total. A two person care is a total person. So he is affected by comfort, rest. If you provide him comfort, he might be a good client to you. But if ever this person has problem with sleep, these are the most difficult people to deal with because they will start yelling. They might be through the night, they will start, uh, they're in pain they will press the call bell over and over again. They might be moaning, drowning with pain. Discomfort and pain can be physical, emotional, social, or spiritual. We know when it is a physical pain. Yes, we might understand she or he has a back problem. But if it's emotionally pain, you need to understand that pain. Some people, they left their home. They are now in this residential home. They are new to you. That client is new to you. It's an emotional pain. Some, person, some people, they uh, lost their loved ones. They lost their partners. That's an emotional pain. And you have to give them time for uh, grieving. They can take years and years to grieve. We always listen. We have to be a good listener. You can't say it's okay. Somebody lost their loved one. You can't say it's okay you lost it. I understand you are in a distress right now. Can I help you? Oh no, this is like this. Be a good listener. Socially, if Think of this one. They are old. Nobody comes and sees them. They have that social... When they are being abandoned by their families, they have that pain. They can't tell you. They have so many kids. Four kids, five kids. Nobody comes and sees them. They are left in that residential home with the unknown people who become their family. That's the kind of pain they have. And some people, when it comes to spiritual pain, they, tell, they get spiritually so mature that they will tell you, uh, I've done this thing wrong in my life. They get that guilt of being wrong, of being, they have done wrong before. That becomes a spiritual pain for them. Okay, after rest and sleep. These both affect rest and sleep, affects dementia a lot. 
if a dementiated person, some people, what they do is they are awake throughout the night, giving trouble, moving out, restless. They sleep through the day. Again, it is a problem. So what we do is we try not to allow them to sleep through the day. If an if you sleep through the day, I, I bet you will not be able to sleep through the night. Will you be? No. You will not fall asleep. Now, these people who are already old cannot sleep more than five, six hours because they're that's what happens when you become older. Either you sleep for a very long time, either your sleep cycle becomes short. It's already short and you slept for a couple of hours in the day. Then for the whole night, they will be awake. What will they do? They start wandering. Bring them up on their, with their wheelchair or with their walker, whatever mobility, if they don't use any. Bring them up, get a chair, sit them up at the front of the nursing station. Be safe than sorry. Okay. Decrease function and quality of life. With aging, definitely there's a decrease in the function. There's a decrease in the quality of life. It's not the same as it was yesterday. It's not the same as it's today. May not be reported. Client may think these experiences are normal part of aging. Some of them, they feel like they don't tell you just because they think it's a part of aging. Yes, yeah, that's true, but you need to report. Types of pain. Now, again, acute pain. It, this kind of pain is felt suddenly from an injury, from a trauma, from a surgery, and it lasts less than six months. Anything that is less than six months is an acute pain. Even a couple of days, couple of hours is acute pain. Chronic pain is something that lasts longer than six months. I have rheumatoid arthritis. My pain is not an acute pain. It will be a chronic pain. Initially, when I get rheumatoid arthritic pain, yes, for a couple of months, it is acute. But when it it's more than six months, it no longer any anything not only pain, any disease that lasts more than six months becomes a chronic disease. If it's pain, it becomes chronic. The word chronic in healthcare means more than six months. Anything less than six months is an acute. Radiating pain, it's felt at the site of tissue damage and in nearby areas. Referred pain, it's felt in a part of body separate from the source of pain. You have a gallbladder pain, there's something wrong in your gallbladder and you would say, oh, I have a shoulder pain. I have pain in my tip of my shoulder. That can be a referred pain. You have a shoulder pain and we'll ask you, is it radiating? Does it mean that this pain, yeah, it is radiating to my neck. It is moving to my neck. The difference between radiating pain and referred pain is, referred pain is means there is pain in one organ, which is far, far, let's say, your liver, your gallbladder, or your heart has trouble. There's something wrong. That pain you can feel. Always they will tell you if there's a heart issue. Is it? Do you feel a jaw pain? Do you feel a pain in your arm? That's kind of referred pain they have. If this thing is wrong here, you might feel pain in here and here. In other organ, other than that separate organ, that's called referred. Radiating pain is, I have an arm pain, I have a shoulder pain. And this pain, it is now moving towards my neck, my closer organ next to it is radiating pain. 
Then we have this phantom pain, which is felt in the body part that no longer there. What can be a good example of phantom pain? Am amputated leg, amputated toe, any amputee, amputee below knee, that's phantom pain. A pain that's no longer. Isn't a pain they, they don't have limbs, upper or lower? Other than that, these colostomies, ileostomies, half of their intestines are being removed. Okay, that's phantom pain. Factors affecting pain. Before we go on this one, always remember again, pain, the level of pain that I experience cannot be the same level of pain you experience. What? Some people, they do not um, know how to express pain. Some people, some cultures, uh, when you deal with some of the cultures, some of the Chinese cultures, even though they have pain, they do not want to tell you they have pain. The reason is they feel, that's one of the cultures in, I don't know what kind of, what do what's the name of specific, that Chinese culture, but we do, you will see those kind of clients. They have so bad pain, but they never, never tell you. Even though you can see their family knows they have pain, but they will not ask you anything for pain. They will not take any pain. They feel like they did a sin before and this is now they are suffering. That's culturally, they have it. You will see, more, those people are mostly uh, Chinese. There's a group of Chinese people. Many factors affect pain, past experience. Knowing what to expect can help or hinder how the client handles pain. If ever your client has a specific um, disease, has gone through that trauma, uh, they have had this experience of pain, could be they know what to do. Suppose your client in is uh, she does had a fractured leg. She knows when she had the fracture in the leg, what kind of pain she had, the cast, how it affected. So somehow they know how it is. And if because they are elderly, they do get often these fractures, she might has she or he might have an uh, idea of what kind of pain I would have, where, how I will how long will it stay after uh, the cast has been removed? What should I do? Applying cold compressions, applying warm compressions, applying creams. They do have an idea. This is not a new pain for them. They have had this um, episode before. Could be a surgery, could be a trauma, could be that specific disease. Oh, you know what? I did have this pain before when I had, when I went for a surgery. So I have this when I had uh, a problem with my gallbladder stones. Now, again, there are some stones. So they do know what to do. If somebody has a kidney stone, they had this pain before, they know what they do. What I did. Or even though they had that experience of that kidney pain. Yeah, last time when I had this uh, pain from the stone, kidney stone, I used to sleep on my right side. I used to drink a lot of water. Things like that. They have some past experience. They know. And you can say, oh, you know what? Can you tell me what, uh, what did you do last time to relieve your pain? Maybe we can try that. Now. Let's see if that helps. That's the past experience. 
And for pain, we always remember uh, we have an acronym. We, we say PQRST about it. Oh, pain, quality, radiating where it is. If you have a pain, how bad is your pain? The first question should come to your mind is, how bad is your pain? Where is the pain? What kind of pain is it? Is it a stabbing pain? Is it a sharp pain? It's a dull pain. What kind of pain? Is it radiating? PQRST. Is it radiating? How long is the pain? How long it has been? How long does it stay? If they have it before. What do you do? If you had this pain before, what did you do to help yourself? Other than pain medication. You can always try it. Always remember, when you talk about pain, remember PQRST. They haven't mentioned it, but you ask them. Okay. Anxiety. Pain can cause anxiety. If you have pain, you become anxious. Anybody who has pain becomes anxious. Oh, what's, why, I have this. They become kind of apprehensive, apprehensive of things. I'm new to pain. I haven't experienced pain before. I don't have a leg pain. I have a pain. I mean, I get this fear. Oh my God, maybe this pain. I have no pain. I cannot come out of the bed. I, I can't walk off my own. I start to get having anxiety, anxious. Anxiety increases how much pain the client feels. And if you are anxious, the more you are anxious, the more pain you feel. Anxiety will bring up your blood pressure. The more blood pressure you have, you will feel headache. You will feel shortness of breath. You will start because they are elderly. They don't know. They will start to have chest tightness. It's not actually. that It's something else going on. It's just the anxiety from the pain. Rest and sleep. They restore energy. If you rest, if you sleep, yes, you will be too much relaxed. Oh, uh, let your client, you can lie down in the bed even if you don't want to sleep or you don't fall asleep, just lie down. We can put the light on for you or I'll give you this book. You can read this book. They are mostly here. The best thing is they are good readers. Pain seems worse when the person is tired or restless. If your client is restless, if he's tired, it could be you feel more pain. So try to settle down, settle them down. Clean them up, toilet them, put pillows in the area where you feel like if he or she has, let's say, a wound uh, or an ulcer in the foot and it's paining, offload that foot. If it's back, put them on one of the sides, either right or left. Put the pillows back at the back of the um, client so that if he turns over, he doesn't turn on the back. There are pillows to support. So you have to make sure you settle your client in the bed. Get some warm blankets. Uh, tuck them in for them. When they're warm, definitely they will feel sleep. Okay. Attention. The more a person thinks about the pain, the worse it seems. When you think about only pain, 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 you will feel 
it becomes worse. So for you, try, you can give your clients something so that they can, it, it will divert their uh, attention. That's why during the day, we bring them out um, in the room all together. We try to do some recreation. We give them those balloons. We give them those sticks, hands up, hands down, just to make sure that they have that time. We put the those musics like we have a Coco Melon for kids. We have so, those old 90s songs, so old 90s songs for them. We put them. Uh, if you are in the residential care, you will see there's a channel called MEC Mick. It is a black and white movie. You will see, they will keep on watching that. There are episodes and episodes of that. Every residential kid. And they look at it, they are watching that so careful. Have to make sure that you do things that will change their attention. Now, is the meaning of pain. Pain means pain means different things to different people. Again, the level of pain, the quality of pain, and the type of pain can be different. Some people can feel pain as emotional pain, as physical pain, as spiritual pain. We don't know what we we have to see. What this, what is the underlying issue? What's the underlying cause of the pain? Based on that, we would say this is the pain. Is it a physical, emotional? Is it what kind of pain is it? Support from others. Pain is easy to deal with when family or friends offer comfort and support. Yes, that's true. It's very easy to deal if there's people around you. If you have physical pain, you might get help from your nurses, your support workers. They will give you some medication. At the same time, we might get warm compressions. We might get, get an ice pack. Your family stays there. They uh, give you a rub. They give you a massage. If you have pain, they will just give you a massage around your arm. Okay, it's okay. All these things, it helps them relieve from pain. Culture and age. Again, it says, see textbook. Uh, respecting diversity, cultural, cultural aspects of pain. I told you some cultures, they think uh, if they have pain, it is just because some th things went wrong. That's why they have pain. They, they don't have um, an expression. They cannot express pain. It's culturally prohibited to say you have pain. Some cultures, yes, okay to have. I should look into the book for this. We'll look at at the end on this one, what it says in there. Understanding the signs and symptoms of pain. Again, clients may verbalize their pain or they may indicate pain through their body language and behavior. If your client is aggressive, if your client has a body clenched, if your client's fists are tight. If your client is grimacing, these are all verbal actions of pain. Or your client may simply tell you he or she has pain. When your client is in pain, they become aggressive because they don't want you to stop it. Because they don't want the reason of being stop it is do you when you see someone is getting aggressive with care you simply ask I'm here to take care of you 
but just to ask, do you have any pain? I can get help you with pain and then we can come back. They might show these behaviors because if they are in pain, they don't want you to turn them. They don't want you to take care of them when you're, who likes to move when you are in pain? Nobody. So when you see behaviors from your clients, please make sure that you ask and tell them, this is what I'm here for. This is what's going on. Ask them if you have pain. Where the pain is, how bad is the pain? How can I help you with your pain? It's not just you would ask, can I help you with your pain? Can I get you something for pain? What do you do if you have this pain? What do you do to relieve the pain? So those are some of the questions that you should personally ask them to help. Any questions still now? Hmm? I'm, um, uh, I'm a bit confused with the radiating pain and record pain. Okay, I will explain again. Anything else from anybody else? You know, every okay. If somebody has had a heart attack or has heart issues, okay. When we say chest pain, they ask you, "Do you? Where is the pain?" You will tell them, "It's in my chest." They ask you, "Is is there a pain in your arm?" Is there a pain in your jaw? This is because if somebody has chest pain, this this is what we ask. When I say radiating pain, it is not, the chest pain is not the radiating pain. I have pain in my chest. I am complaining of pain in my shoulder. I am complaining of pain in my jaw. Is the pain, uh, where was the actual pain? Is this from the, is this chest? Is this chest? No. Now, I tell you, I have pain in shoulder. But I feel like it's going up in my neck. What is next to my neck? Or what is next to my shoulder? Mm -hmm. Anything which is really close by is like, I oh, I have headache, but now I feel like that headache is going in and I'm having uh, pain in my eyes. Or I have, uh, I can't see properly my eyes. I have a blurry vision. Now I suddenly got headache. It can be vice versa. This is what we say radiating. Referred pain. I have the damage is somewhere else, but I do feel symptoms. I have a gallbladder stone, but I feel pain in my tip of my shoulder, which is again referred pain. It's away from the organ that I have pain, that I actually is damaged or that is affected. Yeah? Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. No problem, my dear. Let's take a quick break.
and we'll come back. How is that? Okay, we'll come back at 10.30. It's 10, 10 o'clock, we'll come back at 10.30.
Everybody is back. Ima, are you back? Okay. And today we'll do, after we finish this, we'll do some board book. We don't want that. Uh, we will pile up everything. Okay. Everyone is back. Welcome. So let's quickly go over with our Now, understanding the signs and symptoms of pain. It says, uh, if the client is verbal, the support worker should report and refer PQRSTU. I already told you, P is provoking pain. What factors cause the pain? Before you say what factors cause the what factors cause pain, always ask where the pain is. How bad is the pain? Then you say, what causes the pain? When you don't know where the pain is, what would you ask? Right? So always ask, hey, Mrs. Smith, hey, Mr. Smith, yeah, Mrs. Chang, whatever the name is, uh, can you tell me where the pain is? How bad is your pain? Zero being nothing, 10 being the worst on the pain scale of zero to 10. They would tell you. Then you would say, what causes this pain? Do you know? They might tell you yes or no. What's the quality of You don't say what's the quality of pain. You ask, how worse is your pain? What kind of pain is it? Is it radiating to somewhere? Then, what time did it stay? Or what time did it start? Do you still experience the pain? Yes. Is it getting better or worse? could be it is from you bang the table or something it might get really so you ask is it still is it good? then you would ask the client do you need any medication they will let you know do you need anything else do you want a warm blanket to put on do you need an ice pack for it that's what you say again simple keep it in words oh where the pain is, how do you feel the pain is, what causes it, if you ever had this pain before, what did you do before to help your pain, how severe is it, what kind of pain is it, can I give you some medication, can I ask your nurse to get you some medication, can I help you with something, simple, very, very easy. Okay. Then, Clients who live with dementia may not be able to communicate. I told you there are some clients who have dementia who don't even understand what you're saying kind of pain. They already have so much pain. They do not, if they don't say, they do not experience what better and what worse is, what good and what bad is. Accurate observation and assessment skill must be utilized to determine if the client is comfortable. If your client is sitting up with your eyes closed, no facial expression is comfort. If your client is like this, face is shrink, it's definitely he or she is in pain. If you are lying on your bed and you are comfortable, you leave your arms and legs wide, wide open. But if you have pain, you just crunch yourself. Right? So look at those factors that will tell you what pain could look like. What is the thing that tells me this client has pain? I was trying to move the client, but she's not today trying to turn herself. Why? Because she has pain. But her turning over is today difficult. So we use always a pain assessment dementia scale. We do not tell them 0 to 10 but I was looking at your book. It's a very nice book. Really. Should be 
just saw those faces somewhere. On, on your book page 516, they show those cry faces. But it's kids, we don't have this kids. I was not aware. I'll show you the pain scale. I'm going, oh no, it's at page 520. Some like this. So you, this is a scale, but it's yellow and pink. Very beautiful scale that we have in residential homes, in hospitals. You show them, they point out to the finger. 520. Okay. Now, pain reaction in children. If you are dealing with children, Children dealing with pain may not understand pain because they have had few, very few experiences. They don't have that much experience with pain. Caregivers must be alert for behaviors and situations that signal pain in children. If you see, if you are taking care, you are a caregiver for a child and you see that the child is not playing today, is limping, uh, is not in a good mood, or is trying to avoid playing with, avoid situations with you, it could be the pain, the child is in pain. You again, you use the Southern Pain Scale for kids. You show them that kids picture that we saw on page four. Five hundred and sixteen. You, you can always pull it up from your phone. You show them that. They can tell you whether they have pain or not. See. If they are smiling, it means it's not hurting. If they're just like taking a look at their face. So those are now nursing majors to relieve pain. The nurse uses the care plan to process comfort and pain. She'll go and look into, we would think about distractions, relaxations and guided imagery. I would say distraction can be music, distraction can be TV, relaxation. Again, we would um, put a music on. We can ask them to do some exercises with us. Guided imagery that's focusing on an image, CT, MRIs, X-rays are all guided imagery. Rest and sleep. To be rested means to be calm, at ease, relaxed, free from anxiety and stress. You promote rest by meeting basic needs. Meeting thirst, you give them food for hunger. Elimination needs means urine and bowel passing out, helping to relieve pain and or discomfort, Com providing a comfortable position and good alignment by repositioning them, providing a quiet setting, give them a time to relax and calm down, you provide a clean, dry and wrinkle-free bed to them, you provide clean, neat and unclustered room for them, Unmet love and belongings needs can also affect rest. Yes, if I told you if their family doesn't come, if they lost something from their family, if they have a teddy bear and it got ruined from their loved ones, and it's the only memory they have, a picture that got washed away or somehow things happen that can affect. Visits or telephone calls from friends and family may promote relaxation. If the son calls, the daughter calls, some family friend calls, it really promotes them, their relaxation. They feel like they are useful. Somebody cares about them. Plan for client to rest without interruptions. Those with injuries or illness need rest often, particularly during our receiving care. Once you provide care to someone who has back pain, and then you tell them, hey, no worries, you can just now rest in bed for a while. Take some time, close your eyes, relax, 
and then later on we'll go for lunch. Okay. Sleep is the basic need. It lets the mind and body rest. The body saves energy. It slow down body functions. During sleep, vital signs are lower than when awake. If your client is sleeping, definitely the vitals are uh, blood pressure would be low. The pulse would be low. Because when we do an activity, then our blood flows faster. If our blood flows faster, that means our heart is beating faster. If you walk, you won't have the same blood pressure, same pulse as you are sitting in the couch. Same if I'm moving my arm, it won't be the same as I am sitting down. Tissue, tissue healing and repair occurs. During rest and sleep, all the organs gets repaired. Repairing starts at night. It lowers stress, tension and anxiety. The person regains energy and mental alertness. The two phases of sleep. One is called NREM, a sleep phase where no rapid eye movement. They are just sleeping, sleeping. And this cycle passes four to six cycles of normal adult. And the rapid eye movement is called REM, where you wake on and off. It's called on and off uh, episodes of sleep. And now, what are the factors that affect sleep? Illness increases the need for sleep. If you are sick, you need to sleep more. The signs and symptoms of illness can interfere, even though... There is a more need for a person to sleep when you are feeling sick, but might not be able to sleep that much. Treatments and therapies can interfere with sleep. Yes, if you get any treatment, if you get any therapies, it might uh, help you to sleep or it might worsen the sleep. Nutrition, food with caffeine prevents. If you take, if you give them tea at the night, they won't because tea helps being awake. The protein uh, tryptophan, which is found in milk, cheese, and beef, it tends to help sleep. Exercise makes people tired and helps them to sleep. If you exercise, you try to fall on couch. So try to, we don't tell them to do running, but we can always ask them, hands up, hands down, walk like arms like this, move your arms, move your right up, hand up, left hand up. So those kind of exercises we do. We do also give them those bouncy balls. We ask them to play with those bouncy balls. Uh, put it inside your arm. Now move it within your arm. So those are some of the exercises that we ask them to do. However, exercise before bedtime interferes with sleep, allows allow at least two hours between exercise and bedtime. So when you're uh, talking about sleep, make sure for your own self also, before two hours of sleep, you should try to exercise. Factors affecting sleep environment. We all know if it's too much light, too much sound, too much noise, we can't sleep. So most people sleep better in their own bed and familiar surroundings and promote a quiet environment for them. Medications can help promote sleep. Alcohol disrupts normal sleep better. That's true. Change and stress disrupt sleep. Emotional problems, if you worry, if you have some fear, if you have depression, if you are anxious, you might not sleep. The proper way and this is the most biggest problem for elderly nocturia they need to pee during their sleep in the middle of the night they get up and they want to pee after that they have slept they don't fall asleep yet most of them don't fall asleep yet sleep disorders involve repeated sleep problems the amount and quality of sleep are affected Insomnia means when you are not able to sleep. 
Insomnia is a persistent condition in which the person cannot sleep or stays asleep all night. The reason is they slept could be they slept throughout the day. How can they sleep at night? Or they have, due to age, their sleeping um, is really shortened. They don't sleep. They have some illness, they cannot sleep. With sleep deprivation, the amount and quality of sleep is decreased. Sleep is interrupted. While with sleep walking, the person leaves the bed and walks out. Yes, there are episodes, some episodes, not all. Very few I have seen. I won't say this happens. Some people have that. They just start sleepwalking. Just in their sleep, come out of the bed. They're sleeping, but they're walking. I haven't seen much once in a once in my lifetime. Promote sleep. The nurse assesses the client's sleep pattern. Oh, this client is always awake, or this client is is a late sleeper. They ask you, you know what? Uh, put him or put her into the bed last. Otherwise, he or she will come out of the bed several times. So uh, he sleeps early. Put this person. To bed early. Because you see who goes to bed early, who goes to bed late. Your role in promoting sleep. Report signs and symptoms of sleep disorder. Follow the care plan for measures to promote sleep. Oh, this person needs melatonin in the night time. So they just give it them the sleeping pill. Uh, some people, they need higher medications, so they do get sleeping pills. Report your observations about how the client slept. If you give the client a medication, make sure that you tell the, the nurse, yes, and the client reported he had a good sound sleep. Follow the client's bedtime rituals and routines, eating a best. Some people... They eat a snack at night. Uh, that's called bedtime snack. For some people who are diabetic, they get diabetic snack. Some people fall asleep while watching TV. Some fall asleep while reading a book, 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 and then they sleep. So that is what you have to follow. Sleep disturbances are common with some types of dementia. If people are confused, if they are restless, eating, yes, and if this is uh, wandering. So dementia, when people have dementia, three things are happening with them. One, they are confused. Another, they are restless. They do not stay in bed. They, they are always restless. And third, they start to wander. So these are the three signs of people with dementia and who cannot sleep. So what we do, either we give, we redirect them to the bed again. If they don't, get better with that then we give them some sleeping aids if that doesn't work we just put them in a restraint safety belt if that doesn't work we it still is like hey this client may be at a risk for fall that right. we bring them up to the nursing station and he sits for the whole night then during the day he will sleep so make sure who people who are wanderers who are restless, who are confused, they don't sleep through the day. So they can get tired and sleep at night. Okay? That's our chapter for today. I was just looking because it has been too much. We are moving uh, forward, forward, forward. Um, hold on. So all, everybody, please do get your uh, workbook now let's do it together one by one each one of you will answer the question whether right or wrong doesn't matter we'll share and we'll finish our workbook as much as possible okay i don't want that we got, you guys should get into trouble with your workbook i know it has been we did a lot of chapters you were aware and uh, like we were away from the class. We'll finish it up. We have ample time to do. My, my workbook is at college locker. 
Uh, we can read a book for you. You yes. can grab a pencil, grab a pencil, write the answers so that it will be easy, okay? So we'll start with Amrit A, then we'll go by alphabets, okay? So I don't have to say each one of it. It says the role and responsibilities, your role and responsibilities. Most adults over the age of 70 years have disabling uh, illness. Is that true or false? Yes, starting from chapter one? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was on chapter 23rd. I was about to finish. <laughs> Have you done all the workbook, like 23 chapters? Like, I uh, started, like, whenever you're teaching any chapter, so I open the workbook of the same chapter, good. so it's easy good, for good, me to good. do that. Good. Okay, I'll start with the first chapter. Sorry about that. Let's do That's it okay. first, so everybody would be. Here. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, most adults over the age of 70 years have a discipline illness. It's false. True. Very well. How about now? Next. You have to read the question or you want me to read it? No, no, I'll read it. Support workers are expected to adapt their work to the setting and needs of the client. True. Good. Now for you, Pima. Unregulated care providers must adhere to their employer's code of behavior at all times. True. Yes. And remember that unregulated would be you as well because you're not a regulated. Mm -hmm. okay. Discretion means keeping all private information to yourself. False. Correct. It is okay to discuss your personal problems with a client you have been working for a long time. Uh, the goal of support worker is to demonstrate true compassionate care for their clients and families at all times. True. Wearing any amount of fragrance can cause breathing problems for some clients. Yeah, true. True. In long-term care facilities, support workers assist clients with complex health challenges. Yeah. Huh? True. True. Now is the multiple response question. Activities of daily living includes... Bathing, toileting, feeding, personal hygiene, uh, ambulating, and uh, or transfer. That's it. Yes, we don't... No preparing meals. No preparing meals. Preparing meals is only when it's not act daily activity meals. That's how. Next, support workers' responsibilities can be grouped into following categories. Um, personal care, support worker for a nurse and other professionals, housekeeping and ho um, home management. Okay. The answer for this is personal care. Documenting and reporting any assessments, observations and care, family support, uh, social support. Social support, support for nurses and other professionals. We okay. might do housekeeping and home management. Wait, can you repeat it? A, B, D, F, G, H. Okay. Next is which statement about support workers are correct? Pima cannot, I don't think so. She can do it. So Amrit will pass this. Yeah, up. it's uh, A, C, D, and E. Uh, support workers is a regulated profession. No. Is B, C, D, E, right? Support worker is not a regulated profession. Okay. It is, is it B, C, D, E. e. Okay. 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 Yes. No worries. The letter acronym DIP stands for? B, D, G, H, J. No, I. Sorry. I, J. Yes. I, J. Dignity as well. Right? Wait. wait. 
D stands for dignity, the first one. The, put it at the last. So we we'll have to put D. It's six. Um, yeah, six. D I I. It's actually D I I T S. They wrote this. So it is privacy. It is refresh and preferences. It is. Uh, we don't put this. We put independence. We put individualized care. Eye safety and, and dignity. To, to be a true professional, you must demonstrate. All of these? Yes, all of these. Perfect. Practice for, practice for a professional appearance includes? A, C, D, E, G. I, J. I, J. I, J. Yes. When solving problems, which of the following should you consider? E, C, D, E. A, A C, D, E. D, C, D, E. No, A. No, A. We do have some, we do have personal desires, but our cultural uh, thing does not allow us to do. Where should we find information about scope of practice? B, C, E. Mm. Yep. B, C, E. The clients you support can be grouped according to their problems, needs, and ages. Some of these are? Um, B, C, E, H, I, J, K. B, C, E, G, H, I, J, K. Okay. It also is for you guys, people with mental health problems. A reflective a reflective practice review is oh, C, an honest and evaluation yeah. of all the care you is provided to them. Huh? Is it C or D? C. C. A support worker is considered to be. You can add A and C. Um, Unregulated care provider and C, a certified support worker. A, an unregulated care provider. All yeah. of them. When we talk about a support worker, it's an unregulatory body, unregulated care provider. Wait, were you answering um the multiple choice in team? That was C, right? Yes. Okay. Multiple choice for 18 is C, 19 what? is A. Yeah, what about 21? You said D, right? No, we didn't yet go. We are still doing 20 yet. Support workers' scope of practice refers to C, limit and extend the healthcare the role determined by employers' policies. Then we have 21. Support workers can advocate for their clients. D, speaking D. or acting on the behalf yeah. of the client witness. D. Speaking, the ultimate goal of support work is to improve the client's quality of life by providing compassionate care. Compassionate care. Basically, an example of discretion would be A. Yes, A using the same and speaking about a client. Amy is a support worker who has just graduated from school. She plans to wear her engagement ring to work. Once she's hired, what would you advise her about this? D. Yes. Her ring can scratch. Her, her ring can scratch the client and may create an infection control risk. So she should not wear it. Really? Having concern for a client is? Caring. Caring. Beautiful. A way to preserve the client's dignity would be? Be respectful of clients' wishes. C. Exactly. Which of the following is an instrumental activity daily? B. 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 Management of medication. Because you are becoming a nurse 
and aid. Now we have matched the following. Supervisors, LPNs, RNs, and support workers. Who is the one? Nurse. Mm. Diagnosis and treats diseases and injuries. Occupational therapist. Mm. Diagnosis and treats diseases and injuries. Is it? I don't. I didn't need these ones because I was so confused. Yeah. Physician. <laughs> A doctor, a hospitalist is the one who would diagnose, who would treat diseases and injuries. E. E. A physician, a designated health provider, all hospitalists as well. Provides respiratory treatment and therapies. The respiratory therapist, G. Yes. Assesses and plans for nutritional needs. Dietitian. Beautiful. Assist people with musculoskeletal problems. Physiotherapist. Beautiful. Assist people with learning or retaining skill needs to perform activities of daily living. Social worker? No, occupational therapist. Remember, I will again repeat this. Physiotherapist is the one who will see like, uh, is this person able to move out of the bed? But, uh, and how he will work. But when it comes to occupational therapist, your occupational therapist is the one who is the one who will take care of the cognitive assessment. Cognitive assessment also includes, when you say cognitively, cognitive means brain. Oh, can he do this skill? Is she able to perform this? Can she walk? Who will help? How she will move is occupational therapist. So anything related to mobility, like crunches, uh, uh, these um, uh, walkers and all is physiotherapist. But whether this person can use it is occupational therapist, cognitively, okay? Treats people with speech, voice, hearing, communication, and swallowing. Speech language pathologist. Beautiful. Helps clients and families with social emotional issues of affecting illness and recovery. Social worker. Social worker. So now we have a fill in the blank. A person receives. You missed the 35th one. Assist people with their spiritual needs. Oh, I'm so sorry. Assist people with their spiritual needs is spiritual, spiritual advisor. advisor. Hmm, yes. So a person re receiving care in the hospital is called. A patient. 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 Living facility is called? Resident. Resident. Yes. And the community is called? Client. Client. Professionalism is an approach to work that demonstrates? Respect for others, commitment, competence, appropriate behaviors. Beautiful. Now we have the next chapter, chapter two. We'll see. See, it will help you guys to do it faster because everybody healthcare services deliver delivery to indigenous people is a provincial or territory responsibility only. Pause. No, yeah, pause. The Canadian healthcare system has seen a shift in focus from home care to hospital care. No. Pause. Pause. Hospitals are already so overwhelmed. Clients are being sent home sooner after hospital procedures. True. Yes. True. Home care enables some clients to maintain their health and independence. True. True. Every province and territory provides primary, secondary, and tertiary health care. True. True. Indigenous health and wellness is based on a holistic model of health. True. True. 
people can lose their Medicare coverage if they are fired from a job. False. Support workers provide uh, most support services for home care. True. True. Now is a multiple choice again. The principle of Medicare listed in the Canadian health care are A, B, H. Mm -hmm. A, B, comprehensiveness. D, 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 F, and H. F, and H. Okay. So, it is A, B, D, F, H. Then is professional services offered within home. Nursing, A, C, D, E, H, I. J. Oh, J is not too? Yes. You can put them on oxygen at yeah. home, the respiratory therapy. A, C, D, E, H, I, J. Health promotion refers to strategies that B, improve and maintain health and independence. And also support prenatal and, and uh, parenting, parenting classes. Okay. If it's maternity, health promotion, hold your baby like this, breastfeed them, that thing. This B and C is for 11th. 12th, disease prevention refers to strategies that? A and D. A, A and D. Correct. Prevents the occurrence of the disease and encourages a lifestyle. Home care <clears throat> services today provide support to a large range of clients. These clients include? B, C, E, F, G, and J. Yes. Again, B, C, E, F, G, J. B, C? Huh? Is it B, C, E, F, J, or is it B, C, B? No, it's B, C, E, F, G for goat, J for jug. Wait, repeat it again, sorry. B, C, E, F, <laughs> G, oh. J. Okay. Fourteenth okay. is examples of government policies that promote health and uh, prevent illnesses are B, E, and G. Again, A, B, A is prenatal and preventing diseases. I know we don't, you don't work in maternity much. A, B. E, G. Okay. Now, next is the multiple choice. As a support worker, you contribute to health promotion by? A, providing medical care services that can help prevent major health problems. No. Health promotion. Think of something here. I always put stress on it. D, frequently turning a client who's in bed rest. Remember, repositioning every two hours. The best way to do, uh, to contribute to health promotion. Because when you promote, you're preventing ulcers. Things that are happened, they're already done. D, in 2004, Tommy Douglas was voted the greatest Canadian. His main contribution to Saskatchewan as a health minister was to initiate. He was the one to initiate a Medicare system. Yeah, D. D. Private health insurance. Must be paid by either the, or the client or client's employer. C. Must be paid for by either the client or the client's employer. Remember the answer C. 18. Telehealth offers healthcare services by providing telephone advice from us. B. Telephone advice. An example of health promotion strategy is A. A. And D. Yes. A and D? No, only A. 
it's a program but we are i know uh it can be deep but it's only a program that promote uh, provides ha heading it for senior it should be d also it should be a and d but a and d it's just a or a and d a and d yeah. 19 right yes okay factors that challenge and stress the canadian healthcare system includes A. 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 I told you there will be a time we are helping, but at the time we become old, there will be no nurses. Trust me. 21. Dash health services for the indigenous population were transferred to Health Canada when? 1945. 1945. Fact. Uh, Indian health policy recognized the need for community development and strong relationship between First Nation people, federal government, and Canadian healthcare system. 1979. 1979. Uh, Canadian government publishes Gathering Strength, Canadian Ab Original Action Plan. Um, 1998. Yes. And the medical <laughs> service branch of government was renamed as First Nations and Inuit Health in 2000. Now, it says indicate P for professional services, S for support workers. If it's you guys, say S. If it's anybody else, uh, say P. P. Nursing care. P. P. Physiotherapy. Um, P. P. You don't do that. It's the physiotherapist. Personal care. Yes. 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 Social support, social work. Yes. P. Yes. P. Yes. It's social work. You give social support, not social work. Be yes. very mindful of the words. When you say social work, it means all finance. When you say social support, it's P. Yes, sorry. Assistance with activities of daily living. Yes. Yes. Speech therapy. P. P. See, our three chapters are already done. <laughs> Sorry, Pema, we... Chapter? Huh? We can do it till chapter 23? Not all today, but we'll do a couple of them. I want you guys to be up because it will otherwise... Are you noting down those answers, Pema? Okay. Now... Let's do chapter three, at least five, six chapters. It will lower the burden. And then next we can go ahead. Retirement uh, retirement residencies are financed by the government. Um, false. True. False. No, false. Not retirement. Remember, I told you last time when I was teaching, I told you retirement homes are not supported by the government. They are partially supported by them so you can say yes support workers are responsible for 80 percent of the total hours worked by all home care workers true true some hospitalists hire support workers hospitals true 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 not some hospitals also it's true in the company day program the support worker works independently false False. You never work independently. You always have a team to work with. Working in a facility requires you to do many tasks in a limited period of time. True. True. A lack of uh, privacy can lead to loss of self-esteem. True. True. Another term for acute care is convalescent, convalescent care. False. False. I would throw some light on this convalescent care. Convalescent care is the care that I told you anybody um, discharged from the hospital. After hospital, they get two weeks or five days or ten days of home care. Remember free? That's con that is called convalescent care. 
the time when a home care comes in to help them till they figure out how they will do the rest is conversant. The free uh, 10 days of care from home support. Okay. A chronic illness is an illness that is it ongoing. A eh? mm -hmm. may e worsen over the may worsen over the time. Really has no care, so it's A, B, and C. Okay, an acute illness is described as an illness. A and C that appears suddenly last short period of time. And also when something is acute, just arrived, they also have severe, severe uh, symptoms. If you have fever, flu, you will have severe symptoms. A, C, D. Working in home care presents issues and challenges such as? A, B, D, E, F, G. A, yes. Might not, might be G, might not be G. I didn't put G, I only put A, B, D, E, F. Let's put A, B, D, E, F. Because with G, with other team members, the supervisor will fix them. <laughs> okay. Now, what type of services do community daycare programs offer? B, C, D. Yeah, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Respite from family members? Yes, respite for family members also. We have also counseling for people who have mental impairment and recreational activities. A live-in facility provides care to people who? B, C. B? And C. Cannot care for themselves at home, can care for themselves independently, but are too lonely to do so. But... B and D require basic care but are acute medical care. B and D. Okay. The goal of long term care is to B C. Yes. B C. B C. British Columbia. Example of chronic illness includes diabetes and MS, multiple sclerosis. My goodness. They have so, it's such a bad disease. It's an autoimmune disease. They cannot move, muscles are cramped. So, FIA, B and D. Examples of acute illnesses are? Kidney stone. Pneumonia, which, is, which does not last longer. Influenza, that is our flu and kidney stones. Exactly, A, C, D. Now, 16th, next question. Your client was admitted to a sub-acute care facility. Another name for this is sub-acute. Hospital. Hospital. Hospital is acute care. This is sub-acute. That's called convulsant care. Remember, from the hospital given hours by home care. So the home care is you. You go give medications, okay? Always remember. Mr. Joan receives community-based services. This means? A and C. She receives care in her community hospital. Her health care services are supplied outside of facility. C. Did you see? There's no yes. error. No. The problem is there is only one correct answer for each. Read at the top. Oh. Okay. A support worker can maintain professional boundaries with clients by? B, not discussing yeah. personal problems with not B, B, not discussing the personal problems. Often employers will provide newly hired workers within a written list of expected duties. Why should you ask for one if you don't have? B. So you understand. Yes, D. So you understand D. what tasks. Exactly. 
restoring a client to a normal or nor, uh, near for, uh, normal function is at the aim of which type of care? The rehabilitative. Yes, it's a rehab care. D. 21. As a new graduate, you must, uh, you may risk legal actions by? B. Performing tasks that are outside your zone. Yes. B. Is it not A? Huh? No. no. You can provide. You can be at the uh, risk of legal actions by providing, um, by performing a care that is not uh, in your role. Uh, in home care support workers. B. B are responsible <clears throat> for a wide range of home care services. Sir, uh, serves people and uh, families living with progressive and life-threatening illnesses. C. C. Palliative care. Palliative care. Okay. Provide services to people who cannot care for themselves at home, but do not need hospital care. Long-term care. Long-term care. E. E. Uh, provides temporary care of a person who needs high level of support. A. Respite. A. Provides uh, services to people with immediate health issues. Acute care. Acute care. D. Hospital. D. Provide rehabilitation for people recovering from surgery or injury. Wait, what's 27? That's what we are doing. Provides rehab for people recovering from surgery or injury. Sub-acute care, convulsant care, F. Okay. Provides therapies and education designed to restore or improve a per person's uh, independence. G, rehab. G, G, G. G, rehabilitation care. Provides services for people with mental health disorders. Um, H. 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 Mental health care. Provides care of people in their homes. Home care. Okay. B. B. Home care. We would repeat from 23. It is C E A D F G H B. Okay? E E A D F G H B. C. -E E A D F G H B ball. Okay. Let's go to our chapter four. Wow, I'll keep my hands like this. I'm so tired. Support workers have a formal uh, code of ethics. F balls. Clients have the right to refuse a treatment they do not want. True. 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 You can upload, uphold the principle of justice by being concerned about their client, about your clients. False. No. True. You can uphold. Remember, you can say, you can talk to your client, inform them about their concern, what their concerns are. Is true. It is okay to talk about a client in the locker room. False. There is nothing wrong with accepting a dinner invitation from a member of a client's family. False. A support worker is free to discuss a client's progress or treatment with a close family member. False. False. You should not take sides with a client against a family member. True. 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 Becoming professionally involved with client or their family members may prevent you from providing non-judgmental care. True. 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 Ethics refers to B, C, and D. Yes, B, C, and D. Ethics refers to beliefs that determine what is good for bad or bad 
Rules of Conduct and Moral Principles. B, C, D. Which point should be included in a sample code of ethics for support workers? A, C, D, E, F, and H. Yes. A, C, D, E, F, H. Provide high quality personal care support services, value of dignity, respecting clients' choices, respecting clients' rights, privacy and confidentiality, do not misuse, and promote and maintain client safety. Four basic principles of healthcare ethics are ACDF. ACDF. True. We have which of the following? points will correctly assist you to decide on a course of action when faced with an ethical dilemma involving a client. No, sorry, sorry. That's wrong. B. Collect e F G. B. E F G. Collecting as much information Consider if the action will treat the client fairly and justicely. Decide if the action uh, can cause harm and consider the client's wishes. B, E, F, G. Ethics is? Concerned with what is right and wrong A, behavior. A, perfect. Concerned with what is right and wrong behavior. You... You ask Mr. Burton if she is ready to get dressed. She says, I would like to wait until uh, after breakfast. She is exercising her rights to? C, personal choice. C, personal choice or autonomy. Mr. Burton will not consent to a physical examination. She is exercising the rule of? C. D, refuse treatment. Refuse treatment. Miss, Miss Burton continues to refuse to take a shower. What is true? C. C. C, the staff why? needs, yes, the staff needs C to know first why. Healthcare ethics refers to? C. C, what is normal? Normally right and wrong. An example of just treatment includes A. A, treating everybody with fairness. Next, seeking to do no harm. E. E, non-maleficent. Doing or promoting good. C. C. Abuse. Intentional harm. D. D. Intentional harm. All people should be treated in a fair manner. Justice. B. Justice. B. Accident, injury, or negligence. Unintentional harm. Unintentional harm. F. Having free choice. Yeah. A. Yeah. So for 19, from 1924, it's E, C, C D, 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 F, A. What do you know if your client choice may put him or her at a risk of injury? What should you do? Report to supervisors and risk management. Yes, you must involve the supervisor. You should report it. Involve your supervisor.
Let's do the next chapter. Let's do five chapters today. How is that? Do you want to take yep. a break and then come up or we should continue? Let's do it. Huh? Let's continue. Okay. The fifth chapter is employment standards and legislation protects you from harassment. True. Pause. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's the wrong one. It's okay. Libel is making false statements in print. True. Mm -hmm. The unnecessary use of restraint is false imprisonment. True. True. Civil law deals with relationship between people. Yeah. False. No, no, civil law does. True. A, legis a designated healthcare provider can ask you to obtain consent from a client. False. False. You may refuse to do something beyond your scope of practice. True. True. A common act of courtesy is a way to respect Client's dignity. True. 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 It is okay to open a client's mail in case it contains uns upsetting news. False. False. Respecting a client's dignity can encourage independence. True. True. You may encourage the client to share their private life and personal information for your interest. False. False. Human rights legislation protects against harassment. True. True. Basic human rights in Canada in includes A. Mm hmm. B, C, D. The all the above? No. Uh, not A, the G, C, not the... A, C, D, F, G, I, J. I would repeat. Apple, cat, dog, fish, goat, ink, joy. Okay. A C D F G I G. Okay. Most long term care facilities have policies that recognize the residents have the following rights. A, mm -hmm. A B C D mm -hmm. G. D, G, V, G, H, I, J, K. Everything except F. A, B, C, D, E, G, H, I, J, K. Okay. Everybody okay? Yep. Okay. That's um, how can you show respect to your clients? Um, B. Uh, Why not be courteous first, right? A. Is it B though? Yes, A also, B also. Um, G. Oh, all of these, I suppose. No. Is G. A, B, E, F, G, H, I. I told you, avoid eye contact. Some people think that you are not. A, A B, E. G -H. Yes. A B A B E F G H I J Apple Ball Egg Fish Goat Hen Ink. Yeah. 
Informed consent for a treatment should include knowledge about A, mm -hmm. B, mm -hmm. G, um, I. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you guys say. I did do it because I, I don't know. Read it, read it. Be we are not uh, judging anybody. We'll see how it is. See? Only H won't be there. Yes, only H won't be there. Everything else is there. Yep. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I. Okay. If a client has different values or standards from yours, you should A and D. Only one answer. A. 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 Okay. Uh, if you are asked to obtain a client's signature on your informed consent form, you should Make sure the client is mentally competent. You should always Possibly. refuse because it this is not a support worker's responsibility. Even getting a consent is not nurses. Getting a consent is only done by a doctor. Always remember, a nurse who gets the consent is doing wrong. Because a person, remember, a person who is doing a job is doing this surgery, needs to explain the procedure and needs to do it. I'm not doing it. How do I know? How can I talk on somebody's behalf? I only talk on my behalf. Okay? If a client refuses treatment, what action should be taken by the healthcare facility? Find out what the client is refusing. C. D. B, C. Always remember, D, honor the request and discontinue the treatment. A person has a right to refuse. You have a right to refuse. He has a right to refuse. So, Are we on 17? Huh? You're on 17, right? B. 17, right? D? Yeah, 17 is B and 18 is B. A client tells you he is upset because he believes his treatment was done incorrectly yesterday. Your action is based on which of the following? A. 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 He has a right to voice his concern. Correct. And the facility needs to see what it is. What right do the clients have? B. A. B. A. B. 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 All of them. D, all the above. They do have the right to do electronic and uh, confidentiality, right to social, everything. D, what action by the support worker protects the client's right to personal profession? C, C getting the client's permission to look for an item for them. In the closet. Yes. Uh, an advanced directive is C. D. C. A legal document stating that clients' wishes about future health care. When you say advanced um, uh, directive, advanced directive is always how they want to get their personal care. Remember, most. The other name for it is most. M O S T. A legal right is something that a person C is entitled to in Canada. Yes, C is entitled to 
be in Canada. When a client complains to you about the home care agency policies, what should you do? Inform supervisor of the complaint. Yes. Yeah. C. Inform your supervisor of the complaint. A living will addresses the client's wishes about. Living will care about the client's wishes about. About the care used to. Who will receive the client's assets and property once the client? A preferences about the care used to sustain clients' life. We don't deal with to uh, we don't have to deal with what property they want. We dealing with health system. Okay. So a preference about clients used to. Now, who is responsible for job safety in long term care? See? See both, both employees, employees and employees. employees. Correct. C. An act is another name for law. Law. C. C law. Now match the following. When he making a false written statement that hurts the reputation of uh, another name for that is. Libel. 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 C. Remember, anything that's a false statement that will hurt reputation is called a libel. C. Discussing the client's treatment with your best friend invades the client's privacy. 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 B. B for ball. In order to protect the client's private, uh, right to privacy, the client uh, body must mm -hmm. not be uh, needlessly exposed. Exposed. H. Consent is needed for dash. Observe the client's care. For F. Others. The client has the right to dash and dash mail without in interference. A. Care and treatment. G. A client has the right to send and uh, receive, receive mail without. Mail without. Okay. Mail. A. G for goat. Information about the client dash and dash and kept in uh, confidentiality. A. A. Information about A. the client's A. A. Treatment and condition is kept. A. 34. An individual has failed to act in a reasonable and careful manner and caused harm to the person or person's property. This tort is known as? Negligence. Negligence. D. D. A support worker opens the client's mail and reads it. This is a tort known as invasion of privacy. Yes, E invasion of privacy. Act thirty six. After uh, her morning care is completed, a client wants to do activities. The support worker does not allow the client to go. This is a tort known as. Lander. Is it B? No. No. Could be. False imprisonment. False imprisonment. It doesn't allow her to go. Yes, this is false imprisonment. F. A living will addresses the client's wishes about his dash when he is at a point when he cannot speak for himself. A living will address the client's wishes about his dash, about his care, G. 
जी केयर वाइल क्लीनिंग अ क्लाइंट डेंचर्स द सपोर्ट वर्कर ड्रॉप एंड ब्रेक्स दैम दिस इज अ टॉट नोन एज नेग्लिजेंस नेग्लिजेंस ई Instead of allowing the client a choice, the support worker tells the client that she will get a shower whether or not she wants one. This is a thought known as. Wait, you skipped number forty. We are only doing thirty-nine yet, sweetheart. We haven't been on forty. We are doing thirty-nine yet. Huh? You yeah. You said. Isn't it okay? Um, we just did while cleaning a client's dentures dropped. Instead, now we are doing the thirty nine. Instead of allowing the client a choice, support worker tells the client that she will get a shower whether or not she wants one. This is a thought known as assault. Assault B. B assault. Now forty. An individual makes defamatory statements about another person. Mm. This is the dot known as slander. Slander. A slander. A slander. A support worker talks to employer employees from another department about a client. This is a dot known as invasion of privacy. Invasion of privacy. H. Your best protection against charges of negligence is documentation. Documentation. C. Documenting. Sorry, documenting. C. The client is allowed to visit family and friends in private. Yeah, D. Private. Let me repeat the answers uh, from thirty-six. F. G. E. B A H C D. Are you okay now? Mm hmm. Okay. Now forty-four. The client pressed the call bell twenty minutes ago. When no one responds, he tries to go to the washroom alone. Slips and falls and breaks a hip. This is a thought known as. C negligence. Okay. An individual has injured the name injured the name and reputation of a person by making false statement to a third person. This is the dot known as slander. Again, oh. slander. E slander. When somebody's name and reputation is ruined by a false statement, it's called slander. An individual attempts or threatens to touch another person's body without person's consent. This is a dot known as assault. Assault F. An individual touches another person's body without the per person's consent. This is a dot known as. Battery. Battery G. Perfect. G. An individual exposes the private affairs of another person to a third person. This is a thought known as intentional invasion of policy privacy. A. A. Invasion of privacy. A. An individual restrains or restricts another person's freedom of movement without a designated healthcare provider order. This is a dot known as property. D false imprisonment. It's like you are struggling that someone at one place restriction of movement is false imprisonment. A worker causing harm to a person deliberately is known as. Intentional act. Intentional act. B. A will dresses the client's wishes about personal 
property. So from 44, the answers are C, E, F, G, A, D, B, H. Do we have to fill out all these with pen? Anything. Cat, egg, fish, goat, apple, dog, boat, and health. Next, match the following. What you should or should not do? Ethics. Ethics. Ill. Having free choice. Like autonomy. Autonomy. G. G. <clears throat> Legally responsible. C. Liable. Wrongful act committed against a person or a person's property. Dot. Dot. J. A body of laws. B. Legislation. Falling, fail, fall, failing to act in a competent manner. D. Negligence. D. Negligence. Touching a person's body without consent. Battery. H. Battery. Perfect. Injuring the reputation of a person by making false statements. I. Defamation. I. Defamation. Specific law. Act. Uh, act. Something to which a person is justly entitled. Yes. Right. A. I have a right to say. So the answers are E, G, C, J, B, D, H, I, F, A. Okay. I'm repeating because she needs to write on a piece of paper somewhere. Gotcha. Next question is, informed consent is based on dash and dash. Hmm? <laughs> Okay. Always remember it's based on accurate and complete information. Okay? Based on accurate and complete information. And complete information. If a client complains of chest pain and you do not report this to your supervisor, this is dash act. Negligence. It is a negligent act. Negligent act. I'll give time for you guys to write it down. It's a negligent act. Discussing a person's treatment with your best friend invades the person's dash. Privacy. Privacy. Now you have to list following ways to protect the client's privacy. What would you do? This is very, very nice question. No need to check the book. Let's see what we can do. Step by step. Don't discuss person's treatment with anyone. No. Remember, please mark this 65 question. This is what 
your routine of work should be. This is how you enter a lab also. This is how you do things, okay? Knock on the client's door and wait for a reply before entering, number one. Knock the door, client's door, and wait for them to answer. Number two, ask others to leave the room before you are giving care. Remember, ask the family members to step out. Close the door, drapes and shades, and use curtains or screens to provide care. If you guys need time to write, I can go slow. Okay, let me know. shades and curtains to provide care number four drape the client when you are providing care and expose only the part that involves the treatment or procedure drape client during personal care procedure expose only the part that needs to get the procedure Next, keep clients covered when moving them throughout the facility. When you are moving them from one place to another within the facility, please keep your clients covered. What do you mean keep them? You need to have them a blanket or their back should be covered with a gown or something. Um, okay. Keep clients covered when moving them throughout the facility. Close the bathroom door when the client is using the washroom. Do not open or read clients' mails. Do not touch the client's belongings without permission. Allow clients to visit with others and use the telephone in private. Do not pry or peep into clients' private lives. Keep all personal and health information confidential. Never post any information or image of your client or agency on social media. Or discuss your client with your family, with your friends, clients, family, or talk about them with your uh, unknown people.
we only talk to them with the supervisor or the doctor or concerned person. Not just randomly. What can cause negligence? Think about it. What can cause a negligence? Failing to act in a competent moment. Yes. Not performing a task or procedure correctly. Failing it. Performing a task or a procedure for which you are not qualified. Number two. Simply making a mistake can cause negligence, right? So some of the laws that protect workers, okay. What are some of the laws that protect workers? Human rights legislation? Occupational, sorry, I'll give you time to write. Occupational health and safety legislation. Employment standard legislation. Labor relations legislation. Workers compensation legislation. Long-term care facility legislation. Community service legislation. Community? Community service legislation. Community service. Can it is, I would repeat this because it's human rights legislation. You have occupational and, and occupational health and safety legislation. Safety legislation, health legislation. Then you have the employment standard legislation. Then labor, uh, uh, reg labor uh, relation legislation. Last is workers' employment, long term care, and community services. Everybody okay? Who is responsible for job safety? Works at BC. Other than that, what comes to your mind? Supervision. Employers and employee both have responsibility towards uh, uh, to ensure job safety. If you work, if your employer tells you to do something, which is not safe for you and you do it, both are. So employer and employee 
both have responsibility to ensure safety. Job. Okay. A client a will addresses the client's wishes about property. Personal property where a living will addresses the client's wishes about care. Yes. yes. About care and care to sustain life. It was it was too much gathering. We gathered a lot. Let's do this last chapter six and then rest we can do tomorrow. Are you guys bored? Chapter six. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Chapter six and then we will still be at a par. What do you say? Yeah, the six is only one page. Only right? 25 questions. Not too much. It's very short. A formal group of people who help others uh, other is called a social support system. No. No, false. For some people, spiritual health is... Yes, my dear. Sorry? Oh, she was talking to him. Nice. Okay. A formal group of people who can help each other is called a support social support system. Wrong. For some people, spiritual health is closely linked to religion. True. Okay. Shamans are shamans are believed to use special powers to aid in healing profit, uh, processes. True. Shaffers and shamans. Illness is the loss of physical or mental health. Um, true. True. Self-image is the individual's perception of himself or herself. False. No, self-image is true. It is what I am. It tells me what I am. Choosing athletes for a team shows discrimination against other those who are not chosen. False. It is less stressful if your client, if your client, if you make all decisions on the behalf. No, false. Why would I make decisions on my client's behalf? Yeah. Changes in sexual function greatly affect some people. Hmm? True. Yeah. It does change a lot. Health is defined as a state of complete physical, ment mental, and social well-being. Mm -hmm. And well-being in all parts of one's life. Is it C? B, C, and D. Okay. What are the five dimensions of health? A, B, D, F, G. A, B, D, E, G. Physical health. A, B, emotional health. D, social health. E, cognitive health. How uh, cognitively they are alert of. G, spiritual health. Yeah. What factors contribute to physical health?
physical health. Are we changing diet? A, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Except B, everything. Because B is emotional health. B is not physical health. Everything except B. Okay? How can you promote cognitive health for your clients? A, C, D, E. Okay. Everybody okay? Yeah. What are what are the some what are some of the factors affecting person's experience of illness or disability? Um B. Okay. What is it? A B C B F G a, I mean I. A B C D E F G H I. <laughs> Everything. Okay. Common reactions to illness or disability are. A mm -hmm. B mm -hmm. C and depression D um, Did it only be that or is there more? Common reactions. B, fear and anxiety. C, sadness and grief. If somebody is having illness or disability, he won't have joy and happiness, right? B, C, D, G, H. B for bear and, uh, fear and anxiety. C, sadness and grief. D, depression. G, denial, they don't accept it. A, H, anger. B, C, D, G, H. Except A. Except A and E. Okay. What are some of the changes and losses associated with illness and disability? Um, A, mm -hmm. C, mm -hmm. um, F, mm -hmm. H I A C D E F G H I other than B everything from A to I change in the routine change in the work life change in family life change in sexual function loss of independence loss of dignity change in self image and loss of intellectual yeah.
other than b, everything from a to y. In the past, health was defined as absence of disease C. And now we look at holistic picture, okay? Emotional, physical, and financial well-being. A person's culture can influence health by? Um, making a person... C, influencing whom the person seeks health care from, okay? Determinants of health should be reviewed in relation to D. Each determinant can impact other determinants. Okay. D. Personal health practices and coping skills. B. Are influenced by society and the people who are who you are working with. B for ball. Holism is the consideration of persons many dimensions. A. Holism means consideration of persons many dimensions a dash is achieved through an active creative mind cognitive health c 21 is c dash is achieved when the body is strong fit and free from disease physical health a. Okay. Dash is achieved through stable and satisfactory relationships. B. Social health. Dash results when people feel good about themselves. Emotional health. E. Dash is achieved through the belief in a purpose greater than self. D, spiritual health. Okay? Please make sure that I will give you guys time tomorrow and day after. Let's put the... Target up till how about up till nineteen on Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, on Thursday, I would like till Thursday. I would like you to finish up till chapter twenty. Is it possible? I'll give you two days. Yeah. yeah. It like whatever you don't feel comfortable, whatever you feel is not you can do, you can always skip, but try to go through this as much as or if you if you plan to do three chapters a day, right? Mm -hmm. You have today, tomorrow, and day after. Then Thursday we would be discussing. Unfortunately, what I was thinking, we should have done the today's chapter. But anyway, it's fine. I will discuss it with you guys story instead. If it's too much, we can go down. I'm not in a rush. If we reach um like the chapters, the same chapters, once you, we do like um the chapter you do, can we do the book? after yes. like one chapter and then the book because that'd be easier let's for do everyone. one thing let's do one thing you will do today's chapter because you did the chapter today do mm -hmm. your chapter today that is chapter 23 
and do chapter seven and eight. Okay. Okay. Seven, eight, and twenty-three are the three chapters that you will do today. Okay. Then tomorrow we'll do chapter twenty-four and then the rest. Okay. Okay. And we will discuss the chapters on Thursday. Or we'll discuss this tomorrow. Let's see. I hope you guys are not bored with today's lecture. I did not do much stress on you guys, huh? It was good. It was good. Yeah. So if there is any question, if you come across anything that whether in your book, whether you heard from any personal experience or you are not clear about, feel free to ask anytime. Whether it's a disease, it's a procedure, it's related to your book. Anytime, anything you guys need information about, you can always ask. Okay? Emma, if you can grab your book from school. Yeah, I think I will have to. Because, no, like last time I thought the class will be. I know, I'm, yes, I'm so I sorry. Know. Actually, I thought what, hap what happened is because those days Amrit was also out. We were supposed to have another person in today. But I don't know, is it? It's the weather is very bad and everybody is having flu. I don't want that. We, we can uh, get, we can catch flu from each other. It's better to do online. And then uh, if you guys are not available on, uh, suppose Wednesday, Thursday, whatever day we will be doing lab, I know some of you might be working. Then we can always do it on the weekend or we can do it in the evening. I'm flexible as long as it is not uh, it's safe. I want everybody to be safe and I don't want everybody, anybody to get stressed out just because of this. It's a very easy course. I am always giving you more information ahead just because if you get struck, you know your way out. If you only have one key, it's very impossible for a person if they lose the key. That's why I'm, otherwise it's not, don't fear, don't think things are not good. Be ready to jump in. I always say that. And unfortunately last week I got sick. I was planning to do this a week, but it was a very bad episode. Anyways, we'll see by next week definitely two days will go minimum two days will go to the school and we will not deal with the book we will cover whatever we need to hands on things um we could do it on the weekends like saturday and sunday we will see if if it's okay we don't have to um we can do the we'll not start so early we'll start a bit later okay How if yeah, I'm that's wrong, then right. We'll see how it will work. Which day, will, which time? I know morning time right now is quite, and the weather is not good. We'll try to accommodate it from ten o'clock to instead of one, we'll go up to three. If ever somebody is not working, so we'll just try to squish it that way. We'll try to accommodate everybody. Okay. So for today, please do the twenty-three chapter and the two chapters. Seven, I think it's seven and eight, whatever. Two chapters from behind and one from that we read today. Okay. Any other question? Now you can ask your family about pain. Tell them the PQRST. Always ask in the manner of PQRST. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. You're very bye. well. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya. Have a great day. You too, my dear. Everybody have. Enjoy your day ahead.